Our destiny is determined by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He has the final say concerning the righteous ones of the Lord. And we know Jesus in us, we are more than conquerors. This is the year of our great victory. We are not going to lose any battle because Jesus never lost any battle. We are in the battlefield. We know our position. We are fighting this battle knowing very well success is for us. Because if Jesus is on our side, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, if God is on our side, who can be against us? Nobody that can be against us. In this battle 2024, we are going to be successful. We are breaking all the barriers of the enemy. We are pulling down every stronghold of the devil. Remember, our battle is not of flesh and blood, but we are fighting against principalities. We are fighting against rulers. We are fighting against forces of darkness in high places. Glory be to God. Our text remains the same. It is in Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse 10. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. The Bible says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Those forces are just within our environment. Hmm. They are not far away from where we are. We are fighting against those forces of evil. Forces of wickedness, forces of corruption, forces of nepotism, forces of selfishness, forces of greed. Oh my goodness. We are pulling down those strongholds of the devil. That means we are in a battle. And this battle is going to be won by the people that have been internally transformed from the pattern of this world to the pattern of heaven. Those people that have received total transformation of their heart from the passion of the wilderness to the pattern of heaven. It is not going to be worn by other people. That are not yet transformed. The key statement to watch is about believers that are going to emerge as victors, as conquerors in this world of today. There is something you have to break. So that you have a through way. You, we have to break the barriers of the devil. We have to break those forces of evil. We have to break the powers of the enemy. That are resisting us from pushing forward. There are powers that are limiting us. That are frustrating us. That are making sure we don't succeed. But thanks be to God that he who is in us, he is greater 
than the devil who is outside. You can read from the book of First John, chapter 4 and verse 4, talking about he who is in us. First John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, you dear children are from God. We are from God. And nobody can change that. We are dear children of the master. We belong to him. We are not alone. We have a sense of belonging. We belong to a master. We are the sheep of his pasture. You are from God. We are not just corrected from nowhere. We are from God. Because we are truly born again. By the power of the unperishable seed. Which is the word of God that abides forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen carefully to my brother as he leans on. And have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Repeat again. You dear children. You dear children. Are from God. You are from God. And I've overcome them. We have overcome them. Who are those people that we have overcome? Those are the forces of evil. Those are the people opposing us. Mm. Those are the demons and the powers of the enemy trying to restrict us, forging every kind of weapon to ensure that we do not succeed. And with and thanks be to God. That every weapon the enemy is using, it is, shall never prevail yeah. against the child of God Amen. who has gone through the process of heart transformation. No power that is going to overcome you. No demon that is going to overcome you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's move on with the reading of God's word. And overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. We have overcome them. The devil and his agents, we have overcome them because the one in us is greater and it remains greater than the devil. With the sicknesses and diseases, they are in the world. The devil and demons opposing your success, they are fighting from outside. Inside you have the potential. You have the power of the Holy Spirit from inside of you to overcome whatever evil that comes against you from the outside. The good thing is that you are safe inside because those that are outside, they are unsafe. Hallelujah. You are safe inside when you have crossed the door and you have locked it uh, when the enemy is fighting. The thief cometh from the outside and he finds the, lo the door of your house is tightly locked. He has no access, not even through the window. The same way, the one inside of us has protected us enough such that the enemy fighting this body will never succeed. The enemy coming to fight through our thinking, our mind, our brain will never succeed. He is the control of our minds because we have the mindset of Jesus Christ. We are not using our own intelligence. Huh? We are using the intelligence of Jesus Christ because our minds have been renewed. Renewed to be like that of Jesus Christ. Our thinking, our listening eh, is like that of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are under the control of the Holy Spirit. Yes, from the top to the bottom. From the crown of our hand to the sole of our feet. Karabasik. Hallelujah. He who is in us, he will fight our battles. He will, who is in us, will never allow you to lose your battle. Remember the promises of God. They are yes and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter how many promises God has made, 
They are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So the Bible says, whatever we are going through in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Mm. Who is this man? Jesus. Who is this man? In all the, in all the circumstances that you are in, uh, in every situation that you will face, in every battle that the devil will bring to you, in every resistance, in every opposing powers of the devil, in all these things, we are declared as more than conquerors through him who loved us and died for us on the cross. His name is Jesus. We are overcoming through the name of Jesus. It's the name that has power. The name that the righteous learn into and they are safe. Because the name of Jesus is a great tower. Hallelujah. The righteous run to it and they are safe. We are not going to lose the battle. We are not going to be defeated. In all these things the Bible declares we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us and laid life and laid his life for us. He died for us. He loved us. Through him, we are victory. Through him, we will scale every mountain. Through him, every valley will be raised. Yeah. Through Jesus, every mountain will be flattened. Through Jesus, we will walk on a flat ground, on a leveled plains. Because Jesus with us, we are more than conquerors. Jesus with us, we are more than victors. Jesus with us, we are overcoming the forces of darkness. And there is no weapon. There is no weapon. There is no power. There is no power that is against you. That will prevail. Jehovah is on our side. We are going to be successful in the year 2024. It is not by might. It is not by our own power. It is by the Spirit of God. That we are going to overcome. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So remember brothers. We are in a spiritual warfare. And we have Jesus on our side. After receiving internal transformation. By the power of the Holy Spirit. We no longer conform to the pattern of the world. Don't forget. Our scripture. In Romans chapter number 12, verse 1 and 2, we'll ever repeat this scripture because it qualifies believers to another level whereby after receiving the internal transformation of their heart, they are able to conquer the world of the devil. Let's hear what Paul is telling the people of Romans. The Bible says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and appreciating to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. I'm on verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be he, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and a perfect will. Amen. Amen. It is only the time that you will know what the will of God concerning you is. Amen. After this transformation. Apostle Paul is warning us not to conform any longer to the pattern of the world. So if you do not conform to the pattern of the world, you should conform to the pattern of heaven. Hello? Do you understand the Holy Scriptures? You are either in the conformity of the pattern of the world or you have been transformed from that pattern and now you conform to the pattern of heaven 
the pattern after the model of Jesus Christ. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. Be transformed from it. And conform to the pattern of Jesus Christ. To the pattern of heaven. To the behavioral pattern of heaven. And denounce anything that you left in the world. And part completely with anything that is worldly. And do not be pulled by the passion of the worldliness. But be attracted uh, by the pattern of the things that are eternal. Remember, whatever you see with your naked eyes is temporal. And is going to perish. That is why John is advising us. Not to love the world. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and verse 17. He is telling us to not love the world. It is a warning that is giving us. Do not love the world and anything that is in it. Yes. Why? Because the world and everything that is in it is it's going to pass away. Yes. But those people, hallelujah, Amen. that are obedient to the word of God, we will live forever. First, first John chapter 2, 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. Do not love the world or anything in the world. There are so many things in the world that you can love. Not only, men, not only money. There are other things you can admire and be attracted. And you love them and they are worldly. Hamina. You can even love things that seem to be so glittery. You can even love people in the world that are worldly. Mm -hmm. uh, hello. You can love the alcohol that is in the world. And you can use the scripture to drink a little. You are loving the world so that you come to this church and you have taken a small glass of whiskey. Loving the world. Loving people that are evil in the world. Being attracted by the wilderness. The lust of the flesh. Lusting after women in the world. Yet you are married. And yet you are connected to one or two ladies in the world. And you are known to be a generous sponsor of the two ladies. Hallelujah. That's why the warning is there. So that you do not love the world. The ladies in the world, don't love them. Do not pay school fees. For the children of another woman. And she is not related to you in any way. You are only related to each other in the wilderness. She is not your wife. You have one wife. You should maintain one wife. And pay the school fees for your children. Or for your sister's children. A person that has no connection with you in any way. Apart from sinful practices that is attracting you by the influence of the power of the flesh, so that you satisfy the lust of the flesh by having a relationship with another woman who is not your wife. And you take the responsibility of paying the rent for that woman and the school fees for that woman. You become a full sponsor. And the woman says, in this life, you have to be wise. You have to hook for yourself somebody. And you think God is going to promote you, is going to bless you. You are going to be drained by the devil. You are being told that. You do not love the world. Transform from that pattern of life. 
on being called a sponsor. And when you went into that house, the lady is so wise. Immediately you enter in, the coat is removed. The shoes are removed. The socks are removed. And the hot water is ready in the bathroom quickly. Even if you never intended to take a shower. That is the pattern you are being told to be transformed from. So that you assume another pattern that will condemn the acts of the devil in the world. You are transformed in another pattern that will say no to everything that is ungodly. Why? Because salvation has appeared to all men. And it is teaching us to say no to Virukanjia. No to Virukanjia. No to Virukanjia. Titus 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That grace, there's no question. It has appeared to all men. It has appeared to Burundians. It has appeared to people in Uganda, in Tanzania. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. And the worldly passions. And the worldly passions. The worldly passions. Move on. And to live self-controlled, upright, and a godly life in this present age. And to live self-controlled, upright, and a godly life in this present generation. Can we live a life of self-control? Amina? You control the rest of your flesh. You control yourself. Can we live a self-controlled life? Can we live an upright life? Can we live a godly life? That is why Jesus has not taken your life away. After sinning against him, oftentimes you have fallen short of the glory of God. Oftentimes, you have failed in life. You have sinned against God. And God did not kill you. Why did God not kill you? Because he loves you. He wants you to be successful in this life. Did God slap you? Then you say, how you muke? And in Kosea. One brother told me, Ata, sijui vile mama alifanya, akaniambia na mimi, pasa ni kagonga ye. Na mimi ni kagonga ye. That is a life of a person that has not gone through internal transformation of the heart. He is still a caterpillar. He has not developed to be a butterfly. And when you are caterpillar, you are dangerous. And even your life is in danger because a caterpillar, you can step on it and it can die. But a butterfly, you cannot get it. It is flying above the problems. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The butterfly is flying above and watching the battles down here. Hallelujah. Those are believers empowered by the Holy Spirit. And they are empowered to live above the problems that are down here. They have leapt to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord is fighting their battles when they are just watching. Like uh, King Josbert. He was told to stay still. Remain firm. You will see today the salvation of the Lord. Just stay still and watch. Hallelujah. May you fly above these squabbles, these skirmishes. May you fly above and watch what the Lord is doing for you. Do not remain like a caterpillar. You will be stranded on by people. And the people will crush you. 
demons will crush you. May you be lifted above. May this process of caterpillar come to a completion whereby you become a butterfly and fly. And fly above the problems in the family. You fly above all things. I love this one. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The grace of God which brings salvation as appeared to all men. It teaches you and me to say no to the things that are warrantly, to the things that are demonic. Praise God. You can say no to witchcraft in your family. You can tell your parents no to the issues of witchcraft in that family. You can tell them never no witch doctor, no witch son, no sorcerer that will come in this family as long as I'm here as a born again breed. You tell them it is antichrist and they oppose it in Jesus' name. You can say no to cultural ethics that are negative, uh, that are antichrist, uh, that are against the principles of the Bible. You can say no to those cultural beliefs, uh, those ethnic beliefs, the traditions. You can say no to them. Those which are against the principles of the Bible. Amina. You can say no to them. Then you are told, our culture, we have to do this. If it is anti-Christ, do not accept it. You can say, no, we don't do this in our kingdom. The kingdom of the light. The kingdom of the, of the Lord. The kingdom of prosperity. The kingdom that is without end. Do not conform to the kingdom that is ending tomorrow. We can say no to this casual ethics of taking one goat to nullify a church marriage. That cannot happen. That is demonic. By just taking a goat to the lady's family and you say it is over. Hey, bus. Hey, bus. Hey, bus. Akuna bus. Never. That is the practice of the Lucifer. That is the practice of the devil. That is the practice of the demons and the powers of hell. Praise God. If there is an issue between the spouse, the church, where that marriage was instituted should give the final say concerning that marriage and not otherwise. And not your sisters and brothers and not your parents and not your uncles thinking they are more knowledgeable than where you officiated the wedding. Who is more knowledgeable? Is it the word of God or is it people? Who is more knowledgeable? Is it God? Who said what God has joined? No man should put asunder. And your uncle is putting us under. And you are saying, because my uncle is an, an MD, so what? Praise God. The word of God is encouraging you. All things are possible with God. Bring your issues to the Lord. He will handle them through a servant that he has appointed in the church to listen carefully to your grievances, to your conflict, and he will handle it by the wisdom of God and by the word of God. May the Lord help us. Let me pray for those that are viewing this program. If you are there, you have heard this message and you want to give your life to Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Transform my life from sinful practices to righteousness. Jesus, forgive me of every sin. And I will live for you forever from this day. In Jesus' name we pray.